congratulations! You are officially halfway through the decade of the apocalypse! Clap it up, my friends! Clap it up! Woohoo! <laughs> what does apocalypse mean? It means unveiling, uncovering, revelation, the disclosure of hidden knowledge, a profound metamorphosis and transformation. And I'll be the first one to share that it can be profoundly beautiful and intensely uncomfortable. So congratulations is definitely in order. I want to really invite everyone to take a moment to honor yourself and to acknowledge you are probably unrecognizable to you five years ago. How much learning, how much growth, intense challenges that you've overcome, the courage, the strength, the wisdom that you've had to cultivate in these last four or five years. Thank you for doing the work. Because of the inner work that you've done, we are able to be here still, everyone all in one piece, not only in one piece, more wise, more solid, more strong than ever before. And we can actually hold each other and nourish each other and support each other in a far more beautiful way now. As we transition into 2025, a new timeline is starting to take hold. You don't need me to tell you that old systems are disintegrating really fast right now. And we're growing up and evolving really fast. We are wising up. We are realizing that none of it is theory anymore. The rubber meets the road with how we show up in our day-to-day -day life. And the rubber meets the road in how we show up with our community through intense times of change. There's a deepening, a stabilization, and a um, requirement for all of us to cultivate a state of inner mastery so that we can participate in birthing beautiful solutions in transitioning into a more beautiful civilization. In a meditative state, I'm sure I'm far from alone in remembering that your soul chose this. We chose to come here for these intense times. We came here for this. And maybe some of you have had past life regression or medicine ceremonies or deep retreat experiences or just through contemplation, different experiences where you're like, wow, it is so intense. And at the same time, I did win the cosmic lottery to get a lifetime of front row seat at this amazing experience here. We're living this time of extremes where we're witnessing the messy death throes of a dying world. All these unhealed things, there's like a detox happening where all these unhealed things are being stirred up to the surface and we have to look at them now. There's no option to sweep things under the rug. It's not it's like, nope. We got to see all of it, the good, bad, the ugly, everything, acknowledge it, clear it, discern what we want to keep, dissolve away the stuff we don't want to keep. And each of us on an individual level are going through this intense initiation and the collective also going through this big initiation. And we are metamorphosizing into a more beautiful civilization. We are mutating into a new version of the human. Extreme weather things, changing economies, madness on the political scenes, ecological things happening. Um, I don't know what this guy's name is. Do you know what his name is? He's like this viral guy. I'm not going to play the video because it's like the toggling the screens. But he basically, this is a video that's on my Instagram. You can check out my Instagram page. Or he's like, uh, well, mm. I guess you survived everything so far, so you got that going for you. Yeah. Have a freaking awesome day. Bye. <laughs> and all of his videos are like that. Like, congratulations, you survived another day of the apocalypse. Have a freaking awesome day. I mean, that really is the sentiment for these times. So meanwhile, the advanced and evolved souls that chose to incarnate here we are cultivating the skillfulness to be aware of all the messy things happening in our periphery. We're cultivating this, you know, in Qigong, we always say wherever your attention goes, the qi follows. So we're now learning how to put our energy into the possibilities that deserve our energy, right? That's why they call it paying attention. 
So we're investing our energy and attention into beautiful solutions, permaculture, community building, new solutions for the more beautiful civilization. And each of us are tapping into the memory of which piece of that puzzle we are meant to be playing in this transition. And we're being presented with brrr, all these parallel reality timelines right now. And so we get to be alchemists and we get to choose how to shift timelines as we take one step. Sometimes we don't know what how things are unfolding. But if we're attuned to the energetics at play, we discover that we take one step and then brrr, another buffet platter of beautiful synchronicities just show itself. And then we choose by attuning to our highest excitement and joy and inspiration or based on energetic resonance and then brrr, another set of synchronicities show up and it keeps unfolding like this. And we start shifting our timelines into a certain trajectory step by step by step. And it takes a lot of trust and courage some days. When the mind goes, oh, but what if, what if, but how, but I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I, and it's like, shh, let me attune. Boom. I got it. Take one step. And then the mind goes, oh, <laughs> and then another, take a deep breath. That's just an old pattern. Come back to my center. Get that inner guidance. Step by step by step, we find ourselves creating an ever more beautiful experience of life. So the apocalypse is now, we are discovering all kinds of deeper hidden knowledge. We're going through this profound metamorphosis and cultivating the skill of keeping our hearts open, our compassion alive, not succumbing to the temptation to harden up, which that takes a lot of skill some days and to keep our hearts open, generous, to keep tapping into our love and wisdom, our gifts, talents, and abilities, our true authentic self. All of this while being super strong, stable, centered, rooted, grounded, being really clear, not being afraid to say no, because this is a time I have a mentor, a dear mentor of mine called Jasmuheen. And um, she calls this decade of 20 to 30, the bridge of yes and no's. We keep getting presented with things. Yes to this, no to that. Yes to this, no to that. And we keep listening for discernment, wisdom, what to say yes to, what to say no to. So this is the time of yeses and nos, attuning for that inner clarity. This is why we came here. You and I, we came here for this because this is such a strengthening experience for souls. And have you noticed that for the most part, we've already reached past the tipping point. Like we've already won. Because of how you've chosen to navigate the last four or five years, your example, your leadership, your refusal to make enemies, also your strength of saying yes to this, no to that, your presence, your essence, your role modeling in the community, the love, grace, and wisdom with which you navigated these last few years, you have actually dramatically changed the consciousness in the field. You did that. Think of all those really tough conversations you've had, all the things that were hard to say yes or no to that you really did some soul searching to get clear what to say yes to, what to say no to the last four or five years. You shifted the overall collective consciousness. We've already reached the hundredth monkey effect. However, if you just turn on, you know, certain aspects of the media, some people are still going through rapid detox and still stuck in like old narratives. So let them play that out. If you're amongst friends here and clear that you're participating in the building of a more beautiful world, let's be very conscious about where we um, pay attention, where we invest our time, energy, and attention into. I want to say thank you so much, everyone. Those of you that instead of, you know, that, that you resist the temptation to say, I told you so, with all this stuff that has unfolded, to say, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, the systems and the the people that have been so-and-so in power, we'll talk about power differently later, but have been corrupt and lying and 
I'm here for you. I'm here to be in the field of unconditional love for us to talk about things because it's really intense for everyone right now. Right. Versus like, yeah, I'm so awake and they're <laughs> sheep. All this stuff that in the truth, their community is like, come on, how is that helping anyone? You know, I, I understand. I understand when you feel like there's, you know, intense things and tyranny and we all react differently. It's like the algorithms make us think that we're so different and divided, so much more different than divided than actually is the truth. It really is heart aching and heartbreaking, but also so beautiful that all my friends in North Carolina have shared that, you know, with the intensity, people are like, I don't care if you vote left or right. Like our lives are on the line. What do you need? I got water. I got, I got a generator. Let's help each other. Neighbors, just be neighbors, you know? So it's, it's heartbreaking and simultaneously so deeply beautiful. People are wising up. According to a recent Gallup poll, only 31% of people have either a fair amount of trust or they say that they still totally trust the mainstream media. 33% says not very much. And 36% said that they have zero trust in the mainstream media. So people are not as, you know, dumb as maybe we've thought. Like people have some discernment here. There's a huge amount of truth that's flooding out despite the various attempts at silencing or censoring independent media because the consciousness is unstoppable now. The apocalypse is the unveiling of truth. It just is how the Earth's consciousness, the cosmic consciousness, and our collective human consciousness, it is unstoppable. The old house of cards are crumbling. A new energy geometry, a new energy architecture is not just starting to rise, but is taking root now. It's strengthening, stabilizing, and taking root on an individual level and a collective level. So cymatics is something that we often reference. Probably everyone here knows what cymatics is. It's where you vibrate sound frequency into a medium, whether it's water or like this is like a metal plate with sand or salt or sugar, little grains, and a new geometry, a new geometry. So there's like a spontaneous arising of a new geometry. So the truth is maybe not as simple as a cymatics experiment because there's the interplay between your individual consciousness and the collective consciousness and the earth's consciousness and cosmic consciousness and those of us that are attuned to the fact that we have multidimensional beings and guides and angels and ascendant masters and there's a lot of cosmic energy that is just like flooding in, flooding in, flooding in, flooding in, supporting us as much as we allow it basically. In a state of prayer and meditation, we call upon support to pour love and wisdom into this realm. And that changes the trajectory of the future timelines of mankind. The changing frequencies, consciousness, the wising up, the outgrowing of the old rigid dogmatic black and white thinking, that's all unfolding now. So old ideologies, old dichotomies, you see people still arguing on the internet about left versus right and all these things. And maybe in this community, we're like, you know what? I'm busy building the new civilization. Like where's the wisest use of my energy? So collectively, everyone's going through different stages of their evolving maturation process. And we're starting to expand ourselves into expansive, holistic, nuanced perspectives. And so we're moving from our fragmentedness, our divisiveness, into greater love and wisdom. This is a side-by-side -side comparison that some variation of this, I often like to bring to our gatherings because it's so helpful for the world to say, oh, which tool, tactic, or strategy are you gonna follow? Or what decision or choices or actions and behaviors are you gonna do? And it's not one size fit all. If we attune to the energy, we can find ourselves having a lot of clarity about am I in the old energy or am I voting for the new energy? The old energy being separation, divisiveness, war, conflict, terror, competition, tyranny, control, pushiness, coercion, forcefulness, rigid one-size-fits-allness, rigid artificial scarcity and lack, 
unsustainable, stressful, stifling energy, listen for the energies. It's depleting, it burns you out, it's self-destructive because it's actually an anti-life agenda. So it has to burn itself out. So it's just running its course right now, honestly. We don't even need to do much. It's like just, just Aikido around it so you don't get injured by the disintegration, honestly. That's where it takes a lot of wisdom. Sorry for that. Turn that off. I was telling you to turn off all your notifications and I still have my telegram. Sorry about that. The new energy, the energy of interbeing, which my good friend Charles Eisenstein often talks about. The energy of unity consciousness being clearly different from one size fits allness. Peace, wholeness, harmony, collaboration, the win win win, an energy that's flowing, respectful, honoring, and allowing that supports the strength of natural diversity that is in the flow of a perpetual state of truth, abundance, prosperity, generosity a regenerative, nourishing, nurturing energy, a life-giving, life-enhancing, soulful, and beautiful energy. So if I were to summarize this, it's like what's suppressing of life or anti-life and what's nurturing of life. If I just ask myself this, a lot of clarity already comes. Another framework that I find so helpful is to consider Dr. David Hawkins's map of consciousness. He's a giant in the world of consciousness research. He wrote that book called Power Versus Force and a more recent one called Map of Consciousness Explained. Many of you guys may already be well familiar with this. For those that are newer, a deeper discussion, we go into it in our 18-day prosperity immersion. But just a brief introduction, Dr. David Hawkins discovered that there is something like a, not a linear scale, but a logarithmic scale as we move through these expansions of consciousness. If we operate in a situation with the dominating energy of guilt, fear, or shame, it's not so powerful compared to courage or reason many, many orders of magnitude more powerful, right? It's not that we poo-poo on, of course, we all run into fear or guilt and shame from time to time. But if we've done work and integrated it, then we can transcend and operate from a more empowered state. So that, that fearful voice or the voice of the guilt and shame is not the place from which we make our choices, actions, and decision. It may still be there and we permitted to be there with unconditional love and allowance. But if we make all our choices and decisions out of fear or guilt, lack or shame, these kinds of energies, you'll get a certain kind of result. So according to David Hawkins, below 200, he calls it force. Above 200, he calls it power. That's because anything below 200, you mostly have a victim consciousness and you feel like you got to fight for your rights. You got to be pushy. You got to be, you know, like really pushy and forceful to get anything done. Because in fact, your level of power and potency is very low and very weak. So I encourage you to remember this. If someone's being pushy at you or if you're being pushy at someone, let's be honest sometimes, right? That's a symptom that you're in a very weak state, right? Powerful, confident people are naturally laid back. So at 200 to 500, this is where we become more self-empowered and self-responsible. We're interested in personal growth. We want to learn how to take better care of our finances, our health, our relationship, our communications. And we see that life gives us a lot of opportunities for increasing our wisdom and increasing our strength. And we turn all the so-called bad experiences of life into strengthening experiences from 200 to 500. When we hit 500, which is the level of unconditional love and compassion, another tipping point happens where your life becomes more dominated by a perpetual flow state. There is a perpetual state of flow and prosperity and abundance and synchronicity that is not graspy, not pushy. It's an attunement and alignment. So we don't even look at life as good or bad because we've been through so many experiences that all of the bad things turn into good and sometimes good things turn into bad. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just like what works better? Life is 
And if I attune myself and get myself aligned, I can be in the flow of a lot of prosperity where simply life just works better. It's more effective, more efficient. So at a thousand, that's where uh, Jesus and Buddha and a lot of the great ascendant masters, they calibrate at a thousand. For the purpose of our gatherings, most of our conversations are about loving ourselves, taking beautiful care of ourselves in these sub 200 levels when things get stirred up to love them, to hear them, to work with them and heal these things so that we can catapult ourselves at the 500 plus level as our natural permanent default state of operating our lives so that we tap into this perpetual flow and perpetual state of inner clarity and alignment. Who's in for that? Yes, woohoo, yes. Another model that some of you might be familiar with is um, Ken Wilber and also Don Beck and Dr. Claire Graves developed this spiral dynamics, which became part of Ken Wilber's integral map about the evolution and the maturation, the stages of development that humanity is going through, but also societies or companies, businesses go through these different levels of maturation and development. So that's kind of what's going on. The whole, our, our society, different groups of people are going through different stages of this evolution. In our community, many of us start off with the sensitive self. We tap into the integral self and we're navigating into the holistic self. And I trust in this lifetime, many of us will stabilize ourselves at these more enlightened unity self states, right? So Ken Wilber has this saying that waking up is kind of like the first step, but then there's the growing up, the cleaning up, and the showing up that's being called for right now. So on the whole, humanity is outgrowing the old systems and the old consciousness, and that's why there's a rapid disintegration happening. And my crystal ball prediction is that by 2030, most systems of the world will feel practically unrecognizable Certainly, today's world, much of it already feels unrecognizable from five or 10 years from now. And change is happening at exponential rates. It's not a linear change that is happening. So all of this is catalyzing all of us to do the inner work, because good luck if you don't do any inner work to like deal with all the change out there, right? It's really motivating all of us to get very clear, attuned, aligned within, so that we can actually be ready for the next stage of evolution for all of mankind. Like this work that needs to be done, humanity's evolution actually depends on each of us individually actually doing our inner work and not just talking about it but actually embodying it because life will throw us all the curveballs where we got to learn how to respond with the love in our hearts, but also the strength in our spine at the same time. All of these old systems are disintegrating. Every aspect of our civilization is going to be birthed anew in the next five years. Are you ready? Yes, no, e, e, nail biting. <laughs> 2025 to 2030 will demand that we not only like have energy awareness, no, energy mastery, the mastery of our attention and intention. It will demand that we be in command of our inner state. It will demand that we don't just meditate once in a while to like clear off some stress, that we be in a state of perpetual meditation 24-7-365 that we be a Qigong master 24 seven, 365. It will require that we have command of our inner state and our mind body complex. So, you know, just like eat right and exercise isn't gonna cut it in these next five years. You gotta do a lot of inner work and have command of your nervous system. And the support is here. We're all human and we're all going through this journey of learning and growth. So open yourself to receiving support from communities like ours. This time will require that we get deeply aligned, attuned within and have the advanced skill set of inner listening, energy mastery and deep discernment. Because the world will tell you all kinds of things and you'll be shown deep fake videos. Like, how are you gonna tell what truth is anymore? if you don't turn up your remote viewing skills 
and your intuitive alignment skills, it's going to become non-optional because you're going to, the world will fake all kinds of things, fake alien invasions, fake all kinds of stuff. Like, you know, you know, all the fakery already that all the truthers have been looking at, but it's going to get more exponentially interesting. Let's just say that. What about our relationship with technology? That's probably the dominating theme that is creating a lot of accelerated change.